Hello everybody. We're continuing our liturgical series here and today I was asked to talk a little bit about antiphons. So Father Earl had mentioned the word antiphon when he was talking about and introducing the Source and Summit Missal, which we now have in the church. And you'll notice if you if you leaf through that missal that each day you have something called the entrance antiphon, the communion antiphon. Um, so you find that for every day. And on, on daily masses you'll find certain words italicized. And then on Sunday masses you'll find that on the antiphons there's actually a melody above above the antiphon to actually have a, a somewhat more complex melody to sing it with. Um, so the, the, during the daily mass, the italicized word is actually, if you use a very simple melody, then you stay on one note until that italicized word, and then on that italicized word, usually you do a, a change of three notes at the, at the end of the phrase. And so that italicized word is just telling you where to, um, where to change that if, if you're using that simple setting. But let's take a step back. Um, what is, first of all, an antiphon, and, and where do these antiphons come from? Well, an antiphon, a simple way to think of it is it's a refrain, right? And, and where do, why, why do we have a specific word for it then? Well, it's specifically a word or a, a refrain that's applied to the Psalms, right? So it's a refrain that's returned to after each stanza of a psalm, for example, is, is kind of the, the tradition. And where does this come from? Well, if we look at the early church, the, the songbook of the early church within the liturgy was the book of Psalms, right, primarily. And so you, uh, you look back at that and early on, that was especially taken from the, the Jewish practice of singing the Psalms, right? And they would be sung antiphonally, which means that one side of Maybe you have the room divided in two, right? You have an aisle in the middle um, nowadays, and so we still have that sense of having a, a division in two. And you'd have one side sing one stanza of the psalm, and then the other side sing the other stanza, and then back and forth until the psalm is done. And so that, that goes back to, to the Jewish practice, right? And it was taken up in the church, um, but over time, as you can imagine, it was found that it was simpler, you know, back when you couldn't print everything and not everybody could have access to all of the words. It was easier for the people to, to come to learn a refrain and then respond with that refrain in between verses of the psalm. And then either a cantor or a group of people could sing the verses of the psalm itself and then everybody else could respond just with the refrain. And so these, these refrains came to be um, kind of set they were taken out of scripture, sometimes from the very psalm itself, right? Just repeating a key phrase of the psalm, but sometimes maybe from the letter of one of the letters of St. Paul or some other piece of scripture that's important and that speaks to kind of the spirit of that psalm. Um, and so it would be applied to that psalm and then people would learn those refrains, those antiphons, and they would be able to join in the singing you know, still hearing the psalms, but not having to memorize all of the words to all of the psalms, just knowing the refrain that they could sing. Well, that's kind of how, how it developed at first, a, a very rough um, kind of uh, description of it. But what, what eventually happened was that having this in place, the antiphons came to be set for all of the different Sundays of the year and the holy days of the year and the feasts of the martyrs, the feasts of um, you know, all of the different kinds of feasts we have within the church, each kind of had their own antiphons given to them. And so not, not only did you now have antiphons that had to do with the psalms that were being sung, but you also had antiphons which specifically spoke to what was going on in that particular mass or maybe in that particular season of the church. Um, and so this kind of developed over time, all of it intertwined. Right? And so this is, this is why we have the antiphons today and why they're actually they're written in the Missal. So the Missal is the book we have on the altar when we celebrate the Mass. Um, and it actually has the antiphons printed there. Right? They're, they're these, these little snippets of scripture um, which are used uh, in order to, to kind of begin 
uh, the Mass with song, um, to, to intersperse a psalm at the beginning of the Mass with a refrain that people can sing. Um, and the same at the communion, uh, at communion time, there's a communion antiphon, and actually there's also an offertory antiphon, which you find in the, in the Source and Summit Missals as well. So those all came to be kind of established over the course of the centuries, right? And it's actually, it's very interesting um, that masses came to be known for, for the antiphons that were sung, right? Because back in the day, unlike today, people didn't really like choose songs to be sung at the mass. The songs to be sung at the mass were given, as they still are today, but, but now there's been given more latitude that if, if an antiphon isn't used, then something else can be placed in its place, although the preference of the church has always been for the text and the music of, of the church, which is the antiphons and the singing of the psalms. So nowadays you don't see it as much. You might have, you know, you might have any song on any given day of the year, right? But but back in the day, people knew like, oh, the third Sunday of Advent is coming up. We're going to sing Gaudete, right? Rejoice. I say it again, rejoice. That that uh, that text from Saint Paul was made into an antiphon, and that antiphon was always sung only on the third Sunday of Advent, right? And so people knew, and people came to all the days by by the words of the antiphons, right? So we have, for example, we still keep this. We have Gaudete Sunday, right? People still know that Sunday by that word because it's the first word of the first antiphon of that day. Um, and so we see in the antiphons something that, you know, for, for so long within the church, this was something deeply ingrained in the culture, right? It's something that, that people knew, and, and the antiphons kind of worked their way into the Catholic imagination, right? So this is a very beautiful thing, and we're hoping to, to make use of the antiphons more often since they are given to us, and since, thank God, uh, these days um, we're having composers actually work on the antiphons in the vernacular languages. So we have, for example, the Source and Summit Missile just came out, um, it has settings for the antiphons in English, right? Which is something that Vatican II asked for, that there be settings of the antiphons done in all of the vernacular languages, but it's just taken a very long time to get to the point where we have this available, right? So we've always had the Gregorian chants, the Latin chants, and even the simple Latin chants available for the antiphons, but we're just nowadays starting to see um, English translations being set to music. And, and so we're very excited to, to start making use of that, uh, that resource, and we hope that you're excited for that too.